Coming up on Ag Week TV, the president issues an executive order to restore competition to agriculture. A West Central Minnesota family is carrying on their crop spraying business. We'll tell you about a program designed to help make modern day homesteaders feel welcome in North Dakota. And farmers learn about weed technology from U of M herbicide trials. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Brock. President Biden has issued an executive order to promote competition in agriculture and build a more resilient supply chain. The order includes USDA strengthening enforcement of the century-old Packers and Stockyards Act to hold meat packers accountable. The goal is to make markets more competitive and resilient and give farmers and consumers more choices in the marketplace. Well, I think it's huge. You know, on this 100th anniversary, 1921 to 2021, that we finally start getting some strengthening the strengthening of these rules that allow everybody to compete. USDA is also investing $500 million in American Rescue Plan funds to expand meat and poultry processing capacity and increase competition in the sector, plus develop new rules to strengthen the product of the USA label. South Dakota is also aggressively leading efforts to improve ag competition and fight the anti-competitive market practices of meat packers. That plan was detailed at the Governor's Ag Summit in Sioux Falls. Governor Kristi Noem announced she's working with fellow governors and sent a letter to DOJ asking for action. Frankly, the packers are stealing from our ranchers, making big profits while we're barely keeping our ranchers out on the land. So it needs to be investigated. Noem says they're also trying to improve competition and protect food security by expanding processing. This has never been done where the state of South Dakota has invested in processing at meat facilities to allow these guys to actually get more head through. Ag Secretary Hunter Roberts says they've developed a grant program to expand processing capacity. Uh, we're rolling out $5 million to meat processing facilities across the state. I think 98 facilities are going to receive grants. 16 of those are new. USDA and the state also have an agreement to allow selected state inspected meat processors to ship product across state lines. So the Cooperative Interstate Shipment Program is great for our producers, great for our meat processing industry, so we're certainly excited about that. Noam says she's also concerned about producers suffering from the drought. The state is awaiting early release of CRP for haying and grazing, but Noam's also granted an emergency declaration to hay highway ditches. With that executive order, producers are harvesting as much hay as they can in South Dakota while they can. The drought means taking the ditches earlier than usual, and we found Amanda Cloven mowing ditches along South Dakota Highway 34 west of Wentworth. She and husband Brandt have a small livestock operation and she was cutting hay for them. They prefer small square bales for easier handling and says they're very concerned about hay supplies this year. Just with the drought and assuming that we're probably only going to get one cutting out of everything. Like last year, I think we had two cuttings in some spots. This year's going to be tough. Typically, state rules prevent mowing state ditches before July 10th. The July WASDE report was bullish for wheat and neutral to bearish for row crops. U.S. wheat production was cut 150 million bushels, mostly coming from spring wheat. That resulted in a 105 million bushel drop in new crop carryover, the lowest in eight years. Corn production was increased 175 million bushels with yield unchanged but higher acreage, yet new crop ending stocks were only up 75 million bushels. Brazil's crop was lowered 5.5 million metric tons. And USDA made no changes in U.S. soybean production or ending stocks. Joining us with report analysis is Todd Haltman. And the most bullish part of the report was wheat production being lowered, and most of that came from a reduction in spring wheat, right? Yeah, the new estimate, 305 million bushels, that's down about 40% from a year ago, so that's a big drop. And that could really go even lower. The forecast is not looking any better ahead. So do you think spring wheat prices have to go a lot higher to factor in the lower production, and will that pull the other two classes along? Yeah, I think they eventually have to. Our spring wheat supplies are going to be about their lowest levels since 2008. So that's not a lot to work with, and we're going to be going through winter months where commercials are going to have to bid up to secure more supplies. So in corn, yield was left unchanged, but because of bigger acres, we saw bigger production. But ending stocks were only up about, what, 75 million bushels? 
Yeah, we're around 1.43 billion bushels now, but you know we haven't factored any weather uh, into this market yet on that yield estimate. So in my mind, it's a greater risk of that yield number coming down than going higher. So this may be the biggest number we see for the year. I, I think quite possible on corn, yeah. So we have some upside in that corn market then too. Oh, it's still a very tight situation. We continue to see a very tight scenario of old crop demand. I think that's gonna carry through into the new season. Soybean, ending stocks, yield production, USDA left everything unchanged. But even if you look at that and it doesn't change through the end of the year, we're at pipeline supplies or below, right? Yeah, and uh, I don't see anything to change that. And again, uh, the risk is that the crop gets smaller this summer, probably not much bigger. There's going to be a lot of competition from China. We're already seeing signs of very strong demand coming out of Brazil, and uh, they're probably not far off from turning to the U.S. So if China does come at the market, how high do prices have to go here to start rationing demand? The way things look right now, I think another $15 cash price is not out of the question. Overall, it's still a very bullish scenario. All right. Thanks for joining us, uh, DTN analyst Todd Holtman. Farmers and ag professionals in southeast Minnesota had the chance to see some of the applied research University of Minnesota scientists have been working on this summer. As NOAA Fish found, weed resistance is a big topic. You are the first group, as far as we can tell, in Minnesota that has gotten this. U of M Extension Specialist spent the day demonstrating trials in Rochester, Minnesota. There's quite a bit of data to go into it. One is a graduate student project showcasing cover crops and pre-emergence herbicide, and another trial with herbicide control for weeds. They're also putting together protocols for new crop protection products that aren't on the market yet. We do get to evaluate some of the uh, newer herbicide products. Uh, many of these aren't uh, quite yet registered or they in some cases don't have names yet and so it gives us an opportunity to kind of get a first-hand look as professionals as well as show folks you know what the potential is for some of these products. Of the leaf. That's Palmer amaranth. They also showed how to identify various pigweeds, including water hemp, Palmer amaranth, Powell amaranth, and red root pigweed. And the petiole is pretty long, so this is Palmer amaranth. Extension weed scientist Debalan Saranghi showed some weeds from around Minnesota that had survived multiple sprayings of high doses of herbicides. Roundup, Callisto, Atrazine, Flexter, and Raptor. So those are five herbicides sprayed at three times of the labeled dose and the water and population survived. The hot and dry conditions in much of the region can make weeds an even bigger problem this season for some. In Rochester, Minnesota, this is no fish for Ag Week. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll meet a family whose business is flying high in ag aviation. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you. From top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Make the Superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Hi, neighbor! I know you didn't ask me to, but I grabbed your mail for you while you were out of town. Uh, this one was marked urgent, so I opened it for you. It's your bank statement. Are all those charges right? I highlighted the bottom of page three where you can sign up for e-statements. This isn't my mail. <laughs> e-statements with Cornerstone Bank. Keep nosy neighbors at bay by switching today. Challenges, we all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009 with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. Superior Grain Equipment offers you the industry's best dryer and grain handling equipment. So make the superior choice and get higher quality grains, test weights, and prices while using half the energy. Superior Grain Equipment. 
We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. What can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvests. More than a thousand people attended the Rock Nobles Cattlemen's Summer Beef Tour in southwest Minnesota. It highlighted eight operations, giving producers ideas they could take and use at home. Summit Lake Livestock showed off several buildings they converted from hog facilities 15 years ago. Some of them are wet calf barns where we bottle feed day old calves and then some of them are like the facility behind me, the slat facility that we uh, converted. He says that produced a real cost savings. I bet we've got 40 percent of what we would have had if we'd have built new. Probably less than that, 35 percent, a couple three hundred dollars a head. Break Feed Yards is a multi-family operation feeding three to five thousand head annually. We built the slat barn back in 2012, and we've now we start the cattle outside and try and move as many cattle inside when they reach around 1,000 pounds, and then we'll finish them out around 1,500 pounds in there. He says a unique aspect of the slat barn is the manure storage. It holds uh, 5.2 million gallons of manure, and most pits are cut up. We decided with just the cost difference of the pit, uh, we went with that one big open pit. And r and r Thier feedlot started with 3,000 head in 2004 and has nearly tripled capacity since then. We uh, run a 10 to 12,000 head feedlot custom feeding, some ownership, mostly natives, some Holsteins. They have concrete outdoor lots and a bedding barn, but he prefers the slat barns. All the pens have their benefits and some disadvantages, but overall I think the confinement's probably less labor intense. The Carlson family is carrying on the family crop spraying business in west central Minnesota. Mikkel Pates looks at the unique challenges in this week's Ag Week cover story. I grew up doing this. Boone Carlson grew up working in his family's ag aviation business at Wendell, Minnesota. After several years working in ag retail, he came back to a family farming and crop spraying heritage. The business recently added a Wheaton, Minnesota location. Crop spraying has evolved with agriculture. For one thing, there are fewer spray planes than in past decades. As time moves on, planes got bigger, uh, turbine engines got put on spray planes so they could haul more water. That Our business has, has evolved the same as uh, production agriculture. Flying is my love. Dustin Millett comes from Wisconsin as an ag pilot for the Carlsons. The company's three planes primarily will care for 12 to 15 major clients as well as others. Millett says despite the general lack of rain, the crops appear to hold promise, but they're on the lookout to confront bugs and diseases which could crop up in late July and August. Some guys are seeing bugs in some alfalfa, so we've been taking care of that. Um, the wheat is starting to come to maturity and head out, so we're starting to spray some fungicide on wheat locally. Um, doing a little early fungicide on corn for the protection because of the heat that we've had. Toward the end of the season, they'll seed cover crops from the air. Charity Carlson manages the office with her husband. She says each year has its uncertainties, mainly depending on weather and crop prices. Every year is, is stressful, but generally it, it just it seems to work out in the end. The Carlsons say they love what they do and hope to pass it on to the next generation. In Wendell, Minnesota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll tell you how being a modern day homesteader offers lots of opportunities in North Dakota. Growing up as a kid, Gateway was always the grain bin building and the grain handling people that were out in our area. One of the reasons we chose to go with Gateway was they're the leader in the industry and they are the number one Brock dealer in the United States. We've really liked the Brock design and some of the designs that Gateway has come up with throughout the years. My best advice would be to just push your trust in them and let them uh, come up with the design that's going to fit your needs. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. 
Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Challenges. We all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. More areas in the region received rain this week, which will be much needed before returning to hot and dry. Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. General weather outlook for the next couple of weeks into the northern plains and upper Midwest. The news is not good. We will continue with this drought weather pattern, meaning too much heat, not enough rain. Of course, the areas are really focused into the Dakotas, northern Minnesota, maybe north central, northwest Iowa, getting a little less of a problem when you get down into the rest of the Corn Belt, where it's actually being a fairly good uh, growing season. Uh, I'm beginning to become reminded of the following three years, 2012, 1988, 1976. These were the most recent widespread Northern Plains drought years. And of these three years, it's hard to say which one the present year resembles most. All right, but these are three years which all had extreme drought, too much heat, not enough rain. 2013 ended up being a fairly wet year. Uh, 1977 ended up being a fairly wet year. In 88, the drought really extended into 89, and it took a couple years in the early 90s before most of the region recovered. Of course, on the other side of this would be a look back to the 1930s, where really for about a dozen years there was not enough rain and too much heat. At this point, you can't tell which way this thing's going to go, but it's probably going to take a considerable amount of moisture to recover. And my guess is uh, even if it starts raining in the fall, unless we get s significant rainfall, we're still going to have some moisture deficit problems next year. We'll see. Hot weather into the northern plains, hot and dry. Uh, the temperatures this week as a jet stream ridge really goes north, there are going to be a lot of hundreds getting up into the Dakotas. Won't be 100 degrees everywhere, but quite a bit of that kind of weather. Southeast will be typically hot, just uh, temps around 90. Looks like a bit of rain and some cooling in the southern plains. And of course, the southwest deserts will continue to be quite hot as we go through the week. I don't really see much relief into the northern plains. There will be some uh, jet stream troughing into the Great Lakes, but all that will do is help fuel some thunderstorms in the eastern Corn Belt. There could be a stray storm by the end of the week, the weekend, or next week into the northern plains, but the chance of rain is really not looking promising at all. And the hot weather will likely continue into the final week of July, although there may be some signs of some relief toward the end of this period. I fully expect 90s and maybe some scattered degree temperatures again next week. So we're talking basically hot weather in through the northern plains. Now as far as precipitation goes, this week dry. I really do not anticipate anything other than isolated showers. Southern and eastern edges of the Corn Belt will be in pretty good shape. Monsoonal moisture coming up out of the, the Pacific and Mexico will gradually into the end of July start feeding into the Rockies. Southern plains look dry next week. We may get some widely scattered rains across the northern plains, but it's really the eastern part of North America where the rainfall will be concentrated. Not a lot in the Great Plains or the West. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. 
Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. At Trance Systems, every day is a great day to haul beats. Our family-owned business moves more beats than anyone in the world. We enjoy good work and good pay, and many of us have been here for decades because it's a place where our opinions are heard and our accomplishments are seen. We're your home every day and can take summers off. Here, our safety and yours matter most. Trans Systems, a sweet haul in the Red River Valley since 1983. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Over the next few months, we'll meet some people who have come from far and wide for the opportunities our rural communities have to offer and now call North Dakota home. We're partnering with a nonprofit, Strengthen ND, for the sponsored content series. Rose Dunn talks to one of the newcomers who helped strengthen North Dakota. My cows! My cows! Like a modern day pioneer, Sandy Reeker packed up her family and moved to the country to start a new life. My whole life I've wanted a farm. But unlike the early settlers, instead of heading west, they went north, leaving her native Colorado and landing near Watford City, North Dakota, 10 years ago. The heart of oil country in the heart of the oil boom. Although the money was good, life was tough. The work was hard and they lived in a trailer for a year and a half. I thought so much about the pioneer women and you know, how hardy, how sturdy they had to have been to endure. But they fell in love with the place and especially the people and found their five acre piece of paradise. The people that took me in were so warm and welcoming and genuinely just kind, kind hearted people. Come on cowboy, come on buddy. <laughs> Reeker's pioneering spirit may be why she feels such an affinity for the Mackenzie County Heritage Park. She serves as director of operations, preserving the history of homesteaders. Not only do they have they endured the extreme temperatures, um, but they've also endured World War I, the Depression, Dust Bowl, all of it. In the past 10 years, Watford City's population tripled, and that's after the oil boom slowed, sending many oil workers back out of state. As Mackenzie County's Economic Development Director, it's Daniel Stenberg's job to keep building on that growth. A big part of that is making newcomers feel welcome in a small community with big opportunities. There's just been a lot more opportunity that has come about because of the, the major growth that we've had. And because it happened that quickly, people didn't really fight it. If we can provide that community where people feel like that this is a part of them, then they're gonna stay. I love where we live. I love our life. It's all part of what strengthens North Dakota. In Watford City, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. To learn how Strengthen ND helps build big opportunities in small communities, visit StrengthenND.com. Still ahead, the drought can make one pest worse for soybean growers. We'll tell you what to look for. Hi, neighbor! Oh, I know you didn't ask me to, but I grabbed your mail for you while you were out of town. Uh, this one was marked urgent, so I opened it for you. 
It's your bank statement. Are all those charges right? I highlighted the bottom of page three where you can sign up for e-statements. This isn't my mail. <laughs> e-statements with Cornerstone Bank. Keep nosy neighbors at bay by switching today. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the summer's VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summer Super Coulter Samurai. Go to summersmfg.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short-line machinery dealer. We're also full-service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009, with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Ag Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Hot, dry conditions are the perfect breeding ground for spider mites and soybeans, so growers should be looking for them in the next few weeks. NDSU entomologist Janet Knodel says spider mites move into fields from ditches where they overwinter. They feed on soybean plant leaves and decrease yield. She advises growers to start scouting in the early flowering to early pod stage. They're very small, so start at the edge of the field, shake the plants over a sheet of white paper, and use a magnifying glass to look for tiny moving spots. Scout again about five days after spraying as spider mites reproduce faster when temperatures reach the 90s. And when it's dry, there are no fungal diseases to kill them off. So in about a week, they can increase 50 times. So you can see how we might have a problem when it's a drought and hot conditions. There are several treatment products to so work with your extension agent for your best option or request extensions insect management guide. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have yourself a great and safe week.